All states love naming their official this and that's. For example, you may know the Bay State's official bird or that Rhode Island's official appetizer is calamari, while Maine's official dessert is the whoopie pie. But did you know that Massachusetts may soon have an official state dinosaur? Didn't think so. Well, first, no one runs uh, on a platform to talk about dinosaurs or to create a, a state dinosaur. True, and in all other respects, State Representative Jack Patrick Lewis is a hardworking legislator, helping his Framingham constituents through the current challenges. But he also found himself, as a lifelong dino fan, helping his kids' Cub Scout troop on a project about dinosaurs. I started thinking creatively and went to the internet, came across the fact that about 12 states have official state dinosaurs. If there's gonna be a state dinosaur, it's gonna to have to be the legislature that passes it. See where this is going? Lewis tweeted his idea and things took off like T-Rexes chasing dinner. Teachers in particular started reaching out from across the Commonwealth and they were so excited. Our class voted on what we think the dinosaur should be. Our class is so excited. The winner, after a statewide poll in January, Podokosaurus holyokensis, whose bones were discovered near Mount Holyoke in 1910 by Professor Minion Talbot. And is credited with being the first woman to discover and describe and name a dinosaur in the United States. It's hoped the bill will be assigned to committee by early summer, not that folks can't lobby for it right now. If you say, please support the state dinosaur bill, there's no need for any other details. Everyone will know what you're talking about. Only a few brontosaurus lengths from Beacon Hill, we were on the trail of some stolen property at a most unlikely place, Old North Church. The angels are, are quite old. They actually predate the church. The church here was built in 1723, and then the angels came to us in 1746. It's a very interesting story. It sure is. The angels, believed to have been carved in Belgium during the early 1600s, were on their way to Quebec aboard a French ship when it was captured by a Boston-based privateer named Thomas Grucci on behalf of England, this being pre-independence. And since Britain was at war with France, it was considered a legitimate capture. Got all that? The ship was brought back to Grucci's home port, which is Boston, and then the court would help determine how the cargo was divided between the captain, the ship's owners, the crew, things like that. Things like the Old North Church. Grucci himself, a congregant here, donated what was priceless from his plunder. We can really only speculate about why he chose to donate these rather than sell them. One can certainly imagine that it's a big status boost when every Sunday all of your peers are looking up there and seeing these you know, symbols of how successful you've been. Now, does the church bridle from a term like stolen goods? <laughs> it's not how we describe it's them. It's not how you it's describe them. It's not how we describe no, them. No. A charitable contribution of legally acquired contraband. But needless to say, they're, they're not going back. They're here for us. <laughs> they're <Yeah>. here. <laughs> We've explored a variety of unique museums and collections in our travels. In Lowell, we found one that's about as comfy and cozy as it gets. Many people are familiar with quilts as uh, utilitarian bedding and so forth. They're always fascinated to learn that quilting has evolved into a very uh, sophisticated and international art form. Over 400 quilts on exhibit, impressing visitors with the sheer variety as much as the level of creativity and craftsmanship. What is it about quilts that appeals to people? The tactile experience of making them. Many of our visitors have made quilts. There's the tradition of them being soft and comfortable, and I think that grabs a lot of people. First time visitors are surprised to find out the level of art involved or the level of whimsy, and there's the moving American tradition of quilt as memorial, even social protest. The idea was conceived by Don Beld to honor all of the service people who died in action in Afghanistan and Iraq. Each block tells the story of that service person, but quilts have also been, have written words on them to protest. So that's a long tradition it's in quilting. Back to 1836 in Boston on an anti-slavery quilt. Safe to say I won't be making one, but I will be appreciating quilts in a whole new way. We're 34 years now, and being so dedicated 
to the work of women and being able to promote women artists who are working today in a form that is really underrepresented in most American museums. They're beautiful, and the New England Quilt Museum is the nation's second oldest quilt museum and changes its exhibits frequently. Right now, you can see the exhibit Modern Quilts, which Ted says is amazing, especially in how so much of the woven pieces often resemble actual paintings. Modern Quilts is on exhibit until May 29th. And back to Representative Lewis, he has about 40 House and Senate co-sponsors of his dinosaur bill. Next up, Lincoln makes his mark.